Hi, I'm Stuart from the Norfolk Honey Company and welcome to my Getting Started in Beekeeping. So this is the next in the series of Getting Started in Beekeeping. If you've visited before you'll know that we've already covered off uh, the basics of what a honeybee is and uh, the waggle dance and, and that kind of thing. And when I'm moving on into a little bit of ancestry and history, I want to start with um, looking at the evolution of the honeybee and the different subspecies that we've got. If this is your first time visiting, then it might be worth just popping back and having a look at the first few um, videos in this series. I've put together a series link, so they should all be fairly easy to find. And we're going to build this up into a series of videos that will get somebody who has never kept bees before uh, and is interested in keeping bees uh, into the very first steps of understanding all about beekeeping and then progressing through into next spring and potentially obtaining some bees to start beekeeping next year. If you haven't subscribed then um, please do, it will allow you access to the full range of videos on a regular basis. At the moment through the winter I'm posting three videos a week. The first on a Sunday which is our um, Beekeeping Basics series which at the moment is including a range of items uh, such as beer making and mead making. Uh, I'm going to have a crack at making some cakes and, and stuff like that. So uh, being the middle of the winter here in the UK, uh, there's not much to do in terms of opening up hives, um, but there's lots of other things that we can show you uh, that I hope you'll find of interest. Uh, Wednesdays is the Getting Started series. Uh, these run for about 15 minutes or so, and again, we'll run through the winter, and hopefully, uh, if you follow the series, you'll come out the other end with a, a better understanding of the basics of beekeeping, the kind of equipment that you're going to need and how you can obtain your first um, nucleus colony of honeybees. And then on Fridays uh, is my microscopy in beekeeping series and here we're looking at things like pollen and bee parts and bee diseases uh, under the microscope how to dissect bees, how to check bees for things like nosema, and how to identify uh, the type of honey that maybe your bees have um, been foraging um, by looking at the pollen grains that are held in suspension in the honey. So that's a really good one as well, and that's set up as a series link as well. So we're going through the basics all the way through to more advanced techniques. And if you're in the UK, and uh, you're interested in doing some of the BBKA modules, that's the British Beekeeping Association, uh, the microscopy module is a fantastic uh, assessment and it really gets you into the bee in a uh, way that you perhaps wouldn't normally uh, tend to look to uh, through the microscope. So I recommend having a look at that and um, yeah, so subscribe to the channel and um, let's get started. So to kick off, let's take a look at the evolution of the honeybee. As you can see, we have to travel back in time many millions of years in order to establish where the honeybee first made an appearance on the planet. So here you can see the bottom axis is time and uh, going back in time. You can see that uh, initially we've got the sawflies that um, first evolved around 200 plus million years ago uh, and those were followed um, 80 million years later by the solitary wasps uh, and uh, closely followed after that by social wasps. Well, it's not until around 30 million years ago that honeybees uh, first evolved and uh, it's generally thought that um, the honeybee evolved hand in hand with flowering plants and that the flowers that plants um, evolved were there to encourage bees to uh, pollinate and also the reward for the bees was uh, was obviously the, the nectar and, and the pollen. At some point after honeybees evolved um, 
we've got uh, man putting in an appearance on the planet and um, things change dramatically from that point on. Uh, around 20 million years ago the species Apis mellifera um, was established and that is now our um, honeybee. So that's really where the story started. Now, other than um, Apis mellifera, our honeybee, there are three other species. There's Apis serrana, uh, Apis dorsata and Apis florea. Apis serrana is the Asian honeybee, Apis dorsata is the giant honeybee and Apis florea is the small honeybee. Now, in terms of the original location of the honeybee evolution, um, for many many years I think people have believed that somewhere in the African continent is where the honeybee originally evolved, uh, but some recent research has um, indicated that might not be the case. Uh, some guys over in Sweden have done some research which potentially shows that the honeybee may have evolved from Asia rather than Africa and spread eastwards through Asia and into, into Europe rather than from Africa northwards and into Europe. Um, but again there are many subspecies of Apis mellifera. The ones that we're generally uh, more interested in, um, Apis mellifera mellifera, which we like to call the, the British or the black bee, then Apis mellifera carnica, which uh, is also termed the grey bee and is more an Eastern European um, location. The Italian bee is mellifera ligustica and those generally are the bees that we tend to find more commonly kept by beekeepers. It would be nice to think that um, each area uh, around the world has its own specific type of honeybee that is naturalised to that location and is ideally suited, has all the attributes that you need for your particular climate and conditions. But of course man being man, uh, if there was an opportunity to move bees from one place to another then uh, they were thrown onto a ship and, and shipped around the world and I guess currently uh, we have many many different um, mixes of subspecies of Apis mellifera um, basically through uh, breeding programs, through people wanting to move bees from one location to another, potentially uh, innocently maybe somebody was moving from uh, one part of a, a landscape to another and they were already keeping bees and decided to take the bees with them and just packed them away, travelled several hundred miles uh, and re-established their bees in another location. Um, others however took a more serious view on um, bee breeding and as a result we've got some uh, intensive breeding programs that have been performed over the many years and that has resulted in some very specific types of bee. Uh, and I'm sure most of you may have heard of the Buckfast bee and that's one in particular that uh, is well known through the beekeeping world and uh, again is a cross of various subspecies of honeybee. And one other notable uh, honeybee to make note of is the Africanized honeybee and this was a bee that um, produced a, a lot of honey and in the late 1950s uh, the Apis mellifera scutellata and was crossed with um, Apis mellifera ligustica, Apis mellifera iberiensis and those crosses uh, were then shipped over to Brazil and subsequently it was found that those particular crosses could turn very aggressive and th those bees subsequently having escaped their quarantine, have gradually progressed north and have now gone into continental USA. So the type of bee that you have there um, can be uh, very good at honey production, but is also quite an aggressive bee and 
Um, here in the UK we call it following, where if you go to a beehive and it, do an inspection, sometimes those bees will follow you back to, to your car or to, to the shed or down the garden path. And actually what happens is uh, you don't even get as far as inspecting the bees and the Africanized bees will spot you and come towards you and, and try to sting. And they'll pursue you for a lot further than just a, a couple of hundred meters. So they can be quite a problem. And I was on the internet just checking some details, trying to find some uh, interesting historical facts about honeybees and happened to find some information relating to Aristotle and the details that he's put in some of his writings, in some of his work, um, relating to the honeybee. And I thought that they were quite interesting and that I would share them with you. Although a lot of the information was credited to Aristotle, uh, it's believed that maybe uh, it wasn't so much Aristotle as opposed to maybe one of his, uh, they called them bee masters, who was uh, perhaps the source of the information and that Aristotle just put it into writing. Uh, however, even uh, back then, some 350 years BC, they understood that the colony had three distinct castes within it, that they had the worker bee, that they had the drone, but um, there was also one other bee and they called it the king bee, believing it to be male. Um, but even back in those times they were able to identify that there were three distinct castes within the honeybee colony. And interestingly they believed that um, bees didn't give birth to more bees but that they collected them from flowers which I find quite a romantic idea really. Another interesting fact that Aristotle um, put in his writings was that uh, he believed or understood that the worker bees came from cells within the colony, which is absolutely spot on, but also the ruler bee um, came from cells that were much larger and that hung down from the bottom of the comb, and those are what we now know as queen cells. So they were obviously using their powers of observation to be able to spot the differences between the different types of cells. And finally, uh, two other things from that time period is that people knew that bees carried things on their legs so they could see the pollen basket and see the pollen. They might not have known that it was pollen that was being carried by the bees, but they could definitely see that there was something being carried there. And they also knew that bees carried uh, the nectar in their honey crop uh, and vomited the nectar back out into the hive to be stored and that's just uh, incredible to think that even then they knew that um, honey was bee vomit which again I find quite amusing. If you want to read some more about Aristotle and, and honeybees I'll put a link in the description below uh, that will take you to the page that uh, I found all that information on. So we have to fast forward from Aristotle in 350 BC to around 500 AD where the first honeybee nest ownership in Europe was established. And it's thought that um, honeybees were, were kept in very basic simple log colonies, uh, log hives, log nests established near local settlements so that they had easy access to the honeybees and more importantly the honey. And then from that point we move up into the Middle Ages where bees became more important, bee laws were actually established and an ownership of honeybees were established and those bees were owned by the lord of the manor and he would have somebody maintain his bees. And it's around that time that wicker skeps and straw skeps were, were being made. And one of the products from the hive that was so important to them was the beeswax. Because up until that point, uh, most of the lighting that was used was tallow candles, which would have smoked and probably smelt pretty awful as well. Now that they had beeswax that they could burn, it gave a much better light. The, the candles didn't smoke and they would of course not smell anywhere near as bad as a, as a tallow candle. And monasteries became 
uh, very adept at producing mead and the various types of um, alcoholic beverages that they could produce uh, some of which uh, you'll find in another video that I've produced. I've just made some honey ale and some mead so do take a look at that if you get a chance and then from there we move into more sophisticated styles of beehives and what I'd like to do uh, in the next video is to talk about the types of beehives that were invented, those that became popular and the discovery of the bee space and what that meant for beekeepers around the world. I hope you found that interesting and if uh, you haven't already please do subscribe, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you know somebody that is thinking about starting beekeeping please do share it with them and we'll catch up again next week with some more getting started in beekeeping. Thanks very much for watching.